Hey guys, this is Nick from Forgotten Mining History. My channel recently surpassed 1,000 subscribers, so I wanted to give a big thank you to everyone who's helped my channel achieve that goal. In today's video, we'll be exploring the Mount Gleason and Padre Mines, which are two historic gold mines on the western end of the San Gabriel Mountains. There's a lot of really old equipment around and a really neat adit, so this video should be a pretty good one. I hope you enjoy. All right, so today we're exploring the Mount Gleason Mining District and we came upon the remnants of an old truck right here in the bottom of the canyon. It still has its uh, engine and transmission. See, those are the pedals. And it was a straight six engine. This right here would be the uh, steering column. And let me go around it and get you another view. There's a lot of uh, really cool equipment in this canyon. I've been here before, uh, so I'm gonna try to show you everything that I found. And hopefully we actually find some uh, new stuff as well. <laughs> okay, so here at the bottom of Gleason Creek, there's a remnants of uh, someone's small placer operation. Uh, this is all modern stuff. You can see there's a, a sluice box right here. That looks like a uh, classifying screen. They brought a chair in here. And a little uh, pick. And of course, here's the um, gold pan. Some buckets and uh, hoses down here. And um, here's a view looking up the canyon, just to show you the uh, scenery. It is really gorgeous in here. Very tall trees. So there's a dead tree right here and it's covered with ladybugs. They're just all over it. I'm not sure why they uh, cluster together like this. Even a lot right here. All right, so here at the bottom of the canyon, there's this really amazing piece of equipment. We're not exactly sure what it was, but it has a massive uh, four cylinder engine. It is massive and um, it has a uh, spoked wheels. So this is probably turn of the century. And here's the, uh, the radiator right here. So we're not sure if this was like a trailer, if this was, you know, hooked into something. I don't know, it's hard to tell. Here's the other side. And this right here, this is actually the uh, the clutch. So you see those uh, pads right there, those would engage against this right here. And that would be the clutch and it would be operated by this lever right here. And this is some sort of a uh, differential right here. So it puts power to this gear, we're not even sure what that would run. It also uh, puts power out here off of the end of the, uh, the chassis. So, I don't know, we don't know if um, they were using this to run equipment off of this end, or if like um, the chassis extended out and there were some like driving wheels. I'm not really sure what this is. It may have been like a tractor or something. And I almost forgot to point this out. Unfortunately, the, uh, the manufacturer's name is half broken off, but the last letters are M-S-O-N. So we're going to try to do some research to see uh, who manufactured this and what it actually was. But it is really cool. All 
All right, so right now we're working our way up to the Mount Gleason mine. Uh, we're following this old mining road up through this uh, gorgeous forest. This area is uh, pretty difficult to get to, but once you get to the mine area, it's really nice. So uh, see you when we get to the mine. All right, so we finally made it up to the Mount Gleason mine. Um, this flat area, I believe it was the mill site. Um, the adits are up there. And down this little gully, there's some equipment that I'll show you guys later. Don't worry, we'll get to it. But first, I think we're gonna go head up this road and go explore some of the cabin ruins and adits at the Mount Gleason mine. All right, so we just made it further up this road. Uh, Xavier's checking out the ruins to an old wooden cabin right now. And right behind me, there's a trailer. Uh, Hugh Blanchard mentioned on his website that this is probably for illegal mining. I'm thinking maybe uh, pot growing or squatting, but I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. And there's a bunch of miscellaneous stuff around here. Uh, that's a hot water heater. That's a wheelbarrow. And this is a sink. Uh, there's a heavy round piece of uh, metal right here. Not exactly sure what that was. And this right here and this are both dies to a stamp mill. Isn't that cool? So uh, the dies would be lined up in the mortar box and the stamp would drop onto these yeah, the gold would have been crushed basically right on top of these. Um, apparently the Mount Gleason mine had a, a five stamp mill. that was apparently brought up with a block and tackle on a really steep mining road on the other end of this ridge. Um, apparently it operated from, I think 1889 up to the 1900s at least. Uh, apparently also another interesting fact about the stamp mill here is that in 1896 there was a steam explosion that uh, I guess delayed a lot of their operations because the, um, the stamp mill was run off of a steam engine. Alright, enough facts about the mine. Let's go look at the, uh, the trailer right here. Um, so yeah, I mean the road to this spot is all overgrown now so they must have brought this in a while ago. A bunch of stuff. There's a phone right here. Frying pan. A grill. Just look into the trailer. It's all cluttered. There's like a wheelbarrow in there. It's huge rat's nest now. There's a uh, table right here, and over here is something uh, pretty interesting. Some sort of like Hindu little blanket or towel or something, I don't know. Alright, so right over there is the trailer, and this right here is the ruins of a wooden cabin. Um, I'm guessing it was probably like a bunkhouse based on that bed spring there. Um, I've seen a picture of this uh, standing from the 70s uh, on a picture that I found online. Um, wasn't in good shape back then, but it's definitely in much worse shape now. Yeah, it had a really nice wooden floor. It'd be really neat if this was still standing. See, that's a sink right there. Alright, so we've climbed up the hillside up to what I believe to be the upper adit for the Mount Gleason mine. Uh, you can see the rails coming out of the, uh, the dirt right there. And all that rock is the uh, mine dump. And apparently this was the longest um, adit for the Mount Gleason mine. It was something like 700 feet long. Uh, so this was a pretty extensive mine at one time. It's all caved in. Um, there's a map of the mine that I'll put up on the screen. There's actually two adits above the upper one for some reason. 
and there's a lower one though i'm not exactly sure where that one used to be i'm pretty sure it's caved in but i haven't seen any obvious sign of a portal for it but yeah so those are the rails and right here there's a um fire pit and over here there's a bunch of uh miscellaneous stuff looks like there's something set up over here so maybe they were actually illegally mining it see some mats and like a bowl unless it was just uh squatters again there's a uh, folding chair and the portal used to be right over here uh, unfortunately it's caved in uh really caved in as you can see all that's left is just this little uh indentation in the hillside so yeah there's no underground workings left at the Mount Gleason mine, it seems. Uh, there are some um, workings up above, but those ones are caved in as well. Uh, you'll see that next. All right, so we hiked up above the upper adit, and this right here is the open cut uh, that's seen on the maps. And according to those maps, there were uh, two drifts that ran off of it. Um, it looks like it was all filled in. You can see that's the bottom right there and there's a bunch of like pieces of plastic and stuff down there because it looks like there was some sort of modern mining operation set up here uh, so this right here was a wooden bridge and it went across to this uh, drain culvert with a ladder going down into it I'm gonna go down there but it doesn't go anywhere it's all filled in uh, it's maybe like 30 to 35 feet down, but it's really strange. So it seems like they put in this culvert and then either they purposely filled it in around it or they put this culvert in as a precaution. So when this slope right here uh, came down, they could still get access to the underground workings, but it seems like uh, it still got uh, filled in anyways. It smells uh, a little rank. Rank? Yes. Kind of interesting. They got a drain. Well, they got a couple of drains here. Oh. Should probably measure one of the runs and then use that as a a measurement. Looks like something big may have hit it at one time because there's a. Uh, fairly canny wampus looking thing on the railing, hmm. or not railing, the ladder. See? I reached ground zero. See anything? No. But this, this definitely kept going, and this Let's see. So the ladder goes into the, the floor. Yeah, it just, it just goes into the dirt, and I'm sure it keeps going. Okay, so I climbed down this culvert. Uh, I think I said this before, but it was about 30 to 35 feet down. And it ends in a pile of uh, sticks and rocks. Uh, we think that this went down much further, because you can see that the, uh, the ladder just goes straight into the dirt. And we also think that they were using this ladder as a uh, guide for like a skip or a bucket um because it's worn down along the, the sides of this piece of wood so we think that they're running a bucket um there's like a black plastic bucket right outside this so maybe that was the uh the bucket they're using to haul out the ore so there's a very good chance that this connected to the underground workings but yeah it's all filled in now so Oh look, there's a, there's a stink bug right there. So now it's time to uh, climb back out. Alright, so that's the culvert right there, and uh, again, this is that bridge. It's possible that um, after they hauled like a bucket out of the shaft, um, that they wheeled a wheelbarrow over there and then filled that with ore. Uh, and then over here is the uh, actual vein outcropping. Uh, it was called the um, Eagle Vein, so sometimes you hear the Mount Gleason Mine being called the Eagle Mine. 
and sometimes it was also called the last chance mine because uh, those were the two claims that made it up but this vein right here is called the eagle vein and it looks like it has a lot of iron in it and uh this when i was here in the past i had no idea what this is but xavier was saying that maybe they were using it to uh like crush rocks by swinging it just like like that maybe but I mean, that's probably the best explanation there is. Um, so yeah, unfortunately all the workings of the Mount Gleason mine are caved in. But we're gonna go head up to uh, another mine that's called the Padre Mine. And that one has an open at it, so see you there. Okay, so we're working our way up to the Padre Mine. And along the road, there's a small prospect at it. You can see it's dug into that really beautiful quartz vein has a lot of iron staining in it and it only goes back I don't know 10 to 15 feet and there's a bit of hose in there yep that's the end right there um this may have been the uh, Bay State mine um, the Bay State was sort of located in between the Padre mine and the Mount Gleason mine and the owners of the Padre mine and the owners of the Mount Gleason mine had a uh, court battle over who actually owned it because they both uh, try to put a claim on it and I guess the Mount Gleason company won um, But I'm not 100% sure that that's, this is the Bay State Mine, but seems like a pretty good candidate All right, so across the canyon. Um, I'm not sure how well you guys can see it, but There's a stacked rock wall for an old mining road or trail That uh, heads up the canyon probably to the Padre Mine you can see some more remnants of it right there. And here's a look at the, uh, the scenery around here. It's really gorgeous in this canyon. All right, so we finally made it up to the Padre Mine. This area was probably the mill site. Uh, it's a nice big flat area. And right up there, there's some foundations right in the center of the screen. And right below the flat area, there's some more foundations. You can see right down there. Let me get you a better view of them. And right here, I believe this is a, a stacked rock retaining wall. There probably would have been a pad right where that yucca is. And again, here are these foundations. There's another one right here. And there's a charred piece of wood with some nails in it. Um, unfortunately, the station fire came through here in 2009 and burned most of the wood and stuff here. And right up here sitting on this rock, there are some metal plates that would have lined the inside of a ball mill. That's really neat, you can see there worn pretty well. Uh, these would need to be replaced after they wore down too much. Um, apparently the ball mill was a later addition to this mine uh, during the 1930s, I believe. Uh, apparently this mine originally had a steam-powered two-stamp mill, but none of that is here today, unfortunately. And the adit to the Padre mine is right up here, so let's go check it out. All right, so right over there are those plates that line the ball mill. Uh, this is that other foundation that was above the flat area. And the portal's just over here, past these uh, yucca stalks. You can see that uh, really beautiful quartz vein and dug right into it is a nice timbered adit. This is the Padre Mine. Let's go check it out. All right, so right before we head inside, I wanted to show you this magnificent quartz vein that the adit was dug into. This was apparently called the Padre Vein, which uh, fits the name of the mine. And apparently it was one of the first discovered 
on this mountain. All right, so I'm just inside the mine. Here's a look at this really neat timbering just inside the portal. Always love seeing timbering. And let's go check out the Padre Mine. You can see the Ada is dug right along the quartz vein. And it looks like there's some more timbering up ahead. Okay, so on the right side of this timbering, there are some shelves. They uh, probably stored tools and drill bits and whatnot in there. And look at that timbering, look at how rotted that is. Huh. So there is a bit of moisture in here. And the attic keeps going, there's a slight cave in on the right hand side. And it looks like the quartz vein gets a bit narrower in this section, but it's still, still uh, clearly visible. So right here there's some uh, survey markings and there's a pipe right there. And this right here, this is a stope. So you can see that the vein goes up this way, they were following it up there. And it looks like they had this whole stope timbered at one time. Or maybe they had, you know, like a platform up there and they're running drills on top of it. And right over here there's a short drift or cross cut that goes like 10 feet and dead ends. Yeah, look at the stope. It's really amazing. That quartz vein is awesome. And let's keep going down the, the main at it. So right here there's a some metal thing sticking out of the, the rib of the mine. Um, apparently the ore was free milling close to the surface, but the deeper you went in, uh, you got more rich with sulfides. Oh yeah, look right here, there's actually some uh, sulfides. It looks like iron pyrite. See that? That's really neat. And the van keeps going this way. Looks like there's a right hand turn up ahead. And the course vein is just really beautiful in this mine. You can see some uh, drill holes. And it bends off to the right. Yeah, look at all these drill holes right here. There's several more right here. And just beyond them, uh, the added dead ends. That's pretty much it for the Padre mine. All right, so here in the Padre mine, you can see the imprint of the ore cart rails. So you can see the, uh, the two rails would have went there and there, and that would have been the tie, but they, they removed the rails long ago, probably. Um, uh, this is the mine that's seen on Hugh Blanchard's website. He called this the Mount Gleason mine, but according to the, the mining reports, the Padre mine had a 200 foot or so at it, and then at the end, there was a cross cut north, 30 feet, and this mine pretty much fits that description because uh, this would be a cross cut because you can see the vein runs this way and a cross cut is a uh, tunnel dug perpendicular to the vein so that's pretty much what we see here. Also it, it uh, describes the, the location of the Padre mine according to where the, the Mount Gleason mine was and this is pretty much right where it says it is. Alright, so that's the portal, and I wanted to give you another look at the beautiful Padre vein. It's amazing how distinct it is. And it's composed of huge pieces of quartz, like right over here. Um, this is basically just a huge quartz boulder. 
And the vein went from this side of the cut over to here. This is the extension of the same vein right over here. All right, so this is the cabin site above the Padre Mines at it. Uh, this was the cabin seen on Hugh Blanchard's website. Uh, and his photo is all collapsed, but now that the uh, fire came through here, it's all burned away. And while me and Xavier were exploring the attic, my dad was picking through the old trash dump and found a bunch of old bottles and cans. Check this out. So that right there is probably a ketchup bottle. Uh, this one was as well. And this right here, this says it's French's on it. So that was probably a uh, French's mus uh, mustard. And this looks like an old maple syrup bottle. Uh, there's some, uh, there's like a teacup, um, some more bottles, it's a tall jar, door hinge, there's some china, and this right here, this is a uh, Prince Albert's tobacco can. Uh, fortunately, the front side is all destroyed. And we also found some other interesting things that we don't think are as old as these. I heard there's like a wine bottle or something. We're thinking this was maybe from the 50s. Uh, we don't think that's wine, we think that's maybe water, but I don't know. And this right here is a, a burned camera. So we think that this was Bakelite, because that's why it didn't melt. And I don't know, we don't know how old it is, maybe like 50s or something. But uh, it's a very strange find out of mine. And here there's some corrugated sheet metal that would have lined the sides of the cabin. Over here there's a sink, a very shallow sink. And there's a bunch of pipes and bits and pieces of metal. Oh yeah, right here's the bed spring. So this is what the miner would sleep on. Um, a lot of the stuff that I showed you probably dated to the 1930s and maybe 1940s because that's when this mine was worked last. Uh, the Padre Mine apparently was originally worked in the late 1880s, but it actually was probably worked before then because these veins, quartz veins that run through Mount Gleason, were discovered in 1869, but they never really did much uh, work on them until the 1880s uh, and the 1890s. All right, so here below the Padre Mine, we found some uh, pieces of equipment. Uh, there's a large diameter metal pipe right here, and this it looks a lot like a uh, water wheel or a pelton wheel. Uh, they would run these off of high pressure water. I don't know, it's really strange. It's not like your typical pelton wheel you see. But I mean, that, that's my best guess for it. And there's some more bits of metal and whatnot over here. One second. You can see a uh, metal barrel right there and some other round piece of metal. So uh, like I said before, uh, this uh, mine had a stamp mill originally, a two stamp mill, um, and then they brought in a ball mill in like the 30s. So I'm not sure what they're running the ball mill off of. I know the stamp mill is powered by steam, but if only you could go back in time, right? All right, so we're back here at the bottom section of the Mount Gleason mine. And earlier I mentioned that there's some milling equipment down this gulch. So let's go check it out. All right, so right here in the gully is uh, another die for the stamp mill. Uh, this one looks to be in pretty good shape, except it's broken off on the right hand side. And down here there's a boiler, a ball mill, and a bunch of other stuff. All right, so right up there is the die that we just checked out. And this right here is a massive boiler. It's amazing that they were able to get this up here. So this would have uh, been used to run a steam engine. And that engine would be used to run the milling equipment. You can see the uh, boiler tubes right here. Uh, apparently in 1896, I believe, there was a uh, boiler explosion at the Mount Gleason mine. Uh, so this may have been just a new boiler that they uh, hauled in. And another amazing thing is this right here. 
This is actually a shoe to a stamp mill. This would be the actual piece that would uh, crush the the ore in between this right this uh, face right here and the die. Uh, and this shoe would fit into a boss, uh, which is connected to the stem. Uh, those are those long shafts that um, are moved by the the crankshaft. And down here, there's a uh, a really interesting ball mill. All right, so right here is probably the most amazing piece of equipment here at the Mount Gleason mine. This is a uh, Dodge pulverizer and granulator, uh, which is essentially a ball mill based on my research. And it's really unique because there's a uh, ton of writing all over it, including instructions on how to operate the machine. So this right here says Dodge pulverizer and granulator. San Francisco, California. Uh, this is a patent date. It says patented August 15th, 1882. And there's another date, April uh, 23rd, 1889. And these are some instructions right here. It says, use iron grinders heavier than 15 pounds. And right here it says, Run the cylinder 25 revolutions per minute. This right here says, uh, put the grate bars in the end of the machine and not injure these frames by putting them through the sides. I think the grate bars are uh, these right here. Uh, there, there would probably be a mesh uh, covering them. Uh, so once the ore was broken down to a certain size, it would be able to come out of the machine. And there are more instructions all over. Uh, okay, these are the same instructions that we saw over here. But on the sides, there are some more uh, instructions. You actually turn the light on, maybe. It says, uh, actually, I don't know if that really helps. It says, do not run the mill so full of rock that you can hear the, the rock and iron grinders battle. That's a really neat way to say it. Yeah, this, this piece of equipment is just amazing. And uh, like I said before, the Mount Gleason mine originally had a five stamp mill. I'm thinking they brought this in later, maybe during the uh, 20s or 30s. And this says, okay, this is really uh, worn down. It says, use a very strong uh, compression on the steel springs so the great bars uh, cannot get loose. See that they are locked? I think that's what it says. Looks like you can actually see it better on the camera. Oh, see that the, the nuts are locked. That's what it says. So right over here are some, uh, I guess they're on the other side too, but these would have been the, uh, the springs. Yeah, you can see the spring in there. Hmm, it's really interesting. What does this say? This says, when running wet, use only enough water in the end to keep the, the bearings cool. Use all the water necessary on the screens outside. Awesome. Um, so you could use uh, round ball bearings in here apparently, but uh, these are really made for uh, rolls, which are... Uh, <laughs> It's basically like a, a three inch diameter steel rod cut into a three inch segments. So they're not completely round. It also said that you could use this any piece of hard iron or any hard rock. I guess any rock harder than what you're crushing. Yeah, this is such an uh, amazing piece of machinery. It is extremely unique. All right, so right below the uh, Dodge pulverizer and granulator, uh, there's a jaw crusher. 
This one's a pretty big one. And I believe that this was made by Dodge as well. Because first of all, it has uh, riding and instructions on it. And second of all, the uh, pivot point for the jaw is at the uh, bottom of the crusher. Uh, the crusher is flipped upside down, as you can see. Um, and that was um, their uh, design. They actually competed with another uh, type of crusher called the Blake Crusher, where the pivot point was at the top. And uh, that one was actually a lot better, apparently, because um, <clears throat> the ore would come out here, and since the pivot point is at the bottom, uh, the exit point stays roughly the same size, so it gets choked up a lot, or the uh, Blake Crusher. Um, you can feed a lot more to it at once. And, uh, yeah, it's upside down, unfortunately. It's would be really tough to move and flip on its uh, right side up. Okay, so here on the crusher, uh, there's some instructions. This says, to crush fast, keep the rubber spring set up tight when on account of wear. Uh, loss, motion, something comes in the journal of the pin. And below it, there's some uh, patent dates. I see 1883, uh, 1883, 1890, and 1890. And right there it says uh, number one. So, fortunately I didn't see the you know, manufacturer's stamp on it, but I believe this is a Dodge brand crusher. It's really amazing. Oh yeah, and there is another um, set of instructions down here. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but it says, Tie in the, it basically said tie in the screws when uh, it rattles, so. <laughs> yeah, this is just awesome. All right, so down below the jaw crusher, there's a cap for a boiler. Uh, it's all broken off though, so this may have been part of the, uh, the boiler that exploded at the Mount Gleason mine. Because uh, usually these are in one piece, and you can see it is violently torn apart. Uh, there was a uh, boiler at the Padre Mine, probably for the steam-powered stamp mill, but... So it's either that, or probably the boiler that exploded. Okay, so this looks like another part of the boiler. Yeah, so it's possible that this wasn't intact, and then, uh... You know, when it got washed down the stream, but it got torn up. But this may have actually been the boiler that exploded. Seems like a, a good possibility. And there's another uh, thick piece of metal right there. And uh, we need to get out of here now. It's getting dark fast. So uh, this might be the last uh, piece of footage you'll see. Help me! It puts the lotion on or it gets the hose again! <laughs>